Fritz Haber's life is a profound tale of brilliance and contradiction. Born in Breslau, Germany, 1868, his journey from a curious child to a groundbreaking scientist is both inspiring and unsettling. This is the story of Fritz Haber, a man whose innovations would reshape agriculture and warfare, but also cast a shadow over history. Fritz was born into a Jewish family in Breslau, now Wrocław, Poland. From a young age, he exhibited a keen intellect and an insatiable curiosity. His early education was marked by a fascination with the natural sciences, a passion that was nurtured by his family and teachers. As a child, Haber was known for his precocious intellect. He excelled in his studies, particularly in the sciences, and his parents encouraged his academic pursuits. Fritz Haber's mother, Paula Haber, was a strong and influential figure in his early life. She was a passionate advocate for education and encouraged her son's intellectual curiosity, which played a significant role in shaping his future achievements. His father, a successful merchant, provided a stable environment that allowed Fritz to explore his interests freely. Haber enrolled at the University of Heidelberg to study chemistry in 1886. Here, he was introduced to the world of scientific inquiry and research. His time at Heidelberg was formative, shaping his future career and laying the groundwork for his later achievements. Haber's education continued at the University of Berlin, where he studied under prominent chemists and developed a reputation for his innovative thinking. Haber's academic journey was not just about gaining knowledge, it was about transforming his passion into practical applications. By 1901, he had earned his doctorate and embarked on a career that would soon revolutionize chemistry and agriculture. Beyond his scientific endeavors, Fritz Haber's personal life was marked by both companionship and tragedy. In 1901, Haber married Clara Immervar, a pacifist and activist. Their marriage was a union of intellect and idealism, but it was also fraught with tension. Together, they had two children, Herman, 1902, and Clara, 1906. Clara was intensely opposed to the use of chemical weapons, struggled with her husband's role in their development. This conflict created a chasm between them, reflecting the ethical struggles that accompanied Haber's scientific achievements. The strain on their marriage was significant and contributed to a tragic end. In 1915, Clara Immervar took her own life, a heartbreaking outcome felt deeply by Haber. Her death marked a turning point, leaving him with a profound sense of loss and guilt. Haber later remarried in 1917 to a woman named Charlotte Nathan. Their marriage, while somewhat overshadowed by the personal tragedy of his first marriage, was a new chapter in Haber's life. This new family life provided some solace, but could not erase the shadows cast by his earlier work and personal losses. Please, if you are enjoying this content, take a moment to like and subscribe. Join us in growing this community. Thank you. Fritz Haber's most celebrated achievement came in 1909 with the development of the Haber-Bosch process. This revolutionary method allowed for the synthesis of ammonia from atmospheric nitrogen, a breakthrough that would have profound implications for agriculture and some industries. The Haber-Bosch process was not an overnight success. It was the result of years of meticulous research and experimentation. Haber's initial challenge was to find a way to fix nitrogen, an element used for plant growth, but largely inert in its atmospheric form. His approach involved high pressure reactions at elevated temperatures, a novel concept at the time. The breakthrough came when Haber, working with his colleague, Carl Bosch, perfected a method to produce ammonia efficiently. The process required a catalyst iron and operated under high pressure, making it a feat of both chemical ingenuity and engineering prowess. This innovation transformed agriculture by enabling the large-scale production of synthetic fertilizers, leading to unprecedented increases in crop yields. Haber's process was hailed as one of the greatest scientific achievements of the 20th century. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for his discovery. It not only advanced scientific knowledge, but also had a profound impact on global food security supporting a growing world population and ushering in the Green Revolution. However, the outbreak of World War I marked a dark turn in Haber's career. Driven by a fervent sense of duty, he turned his attention to chemical warfare. His expertise in chemistry was redirected towards the development of lethal gases, a shift that revealed the darker side of scientific progress. 
Haber's advocacy for chlorine gas and other chemical weapons introduced a new era of terror on the battlefield. The use of these gases during the Second Battle of Ypres in 1915 demonstrated the devastating power of chemical warfare. A far cry from his earlier agricultural achievements, Haber's involvement in chemical warfare brought with it moral and ethical dilemmas. The very innovations that had promised to nourish the world were now used to inflict suffering and death, highlighting the duality of his scientific contributions. When the world emerged from the war, the legacy of chemical warfare continued to evolve. Zyklon B, originally developed as a fumigant, found a horrifying new role. Although Haber did not develop Zyklon B for this purpose, the technology of chemical warfare he pioneered contributed to its repurposing. Zyklon B was used by the Nazis as a means of mass extermination in concentration camps. The tragic repurposing of this substance underscores the chilling potential of scientific discoveries when applied without ethical restraint. The use of Zyklon B in the Holocaust stands as a stark reminder of how scientific advancements can be twisted to serve destructive ends. Haber's innovations, once symbols of progress, became instruments of genocide. In 1933, when the Nazis came to power, Haber was forced to resign from his position at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. Despite his significant scientific achievements and contributions, the regime's anti-Semitic policies led to his dismissal. Haber eventually emigrated to Switzerland and then to Britain, where he continued his work, but remained a displaced figure. Fritz Haber's life encapsulates the dual nature of human endeavor. On one hand, his contributions to agriculture transformed global food production and supported billions. On the other, his role in chemical warfare and the subsequent use of his innovations in the Holocaust highlight the darker side of scientific progress. Haber's story is a compelling reflection on the ethical responsibilities that accompany scientific discovery. His achievements and moral failures present a complex legacy that invites us to ponder the broader implications of innovation. Fritz Haber's death in 1934 did not end the debate over his life. His advancements in fertilizer production continued to be recognized for their positive impact. But his involvement in chemical warfare and the Holocaust complicates his legacy. As we reflect on Fritz Haber, we are confronted with the profound ethical questions that arise from scientific progress. His life challenges us to consider the moral dimensions of innovation and the responsibility of scientists in shaping the future. Haber's story is a poignant reminder of the impact of science on both our world and our conscience. His complex legacy invites us to navigate the intersection of progress and morality with a thoughtful and critical perspective. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Fritz Haber's life. His story is a powerful testament to the dual nature of scientific achievement and the ethical considerations that guide our pursuit of knowledge. As we look towards the future, let us remember the lessons of the past and strive to balance innovation with moral integrity.